Hello viewers and welcome to the December episode of NASCOM Insights Tech Bytes. We are back with interesting insights from our latest research into technology and market trends, which I'm sure will be valuable when you define your tech strategy. In this episode, we will delve into four interesting reports that we released recently. We recently launched Open Innovation, the catalyst for transforming India's technology ecosystem in partnership with Avasanth, digitalizing insurance, Indian end consumer perspective supported by ICICI Lombard, Indian tech industry digital talent demand supply analysis 2023 with our collaboration with NASCOM Future Skills platform and finally the quarterly industry review for Q2 FY 2024. We'll also offer a summary of the key discussions with technology industry experts presented on the NASCOM Insights channel in the previous month. And within our fact book segment, we'll relay significant events, deals, contracts, partnerships in the Indian technology sector during November. But before we proceed, please make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay updated with the most recent insights and trends in the tech industry. Just click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell button without delay. And now, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our analysts as they share takeaways from the reports released by NASCOM Insights in November. The good news for you is that most of the reports are free and we are also running some discounted offers for the paid reports. The download links for the same are in the description box below. Do check them out. Joining us for a discussion on the insights from our report, Open Innovation, the catalyst for transforming India's technology ecosystem is Ashish. Welcome to Tech Bytes, Ashish. Thanks, Samitra. Ashish, my first question to you. How do stakeholders benefit from open innovation programs? And what are the key tools used to realize these benefits? Open innovation has a lot of benefits. Open innovation has led to enhanced creativity and ideation, reduced R&D cost, allowed for access to external expertise, increased market adaptability of solutions, and led to faster time to market. Now, from the corporate perspective, open innovation has led to 1.25x times higher likelihood of introducing pioneering products or services. Now, if we talk about from the uh, startup perspective, adopting open innovation can enable them to decrease their time to market by as much as 70%. Mm -hmm. Now, to answer your second question, the, what are the key uh, tools that uh, stakeholders utilize? So, the key tools include innovation challenges, collaboration partnerships, technology or research consortia, incubate accelerators, or crowdsourcing, joint ventures, innovation hubs, licensing and technology transfer, and of course, corporate venture capital. So these are the key tools that uh, uh, stakeholders utilize. Very interesting, Ashish. You mentioned a lot of stakeholders. Tell us more about why academia is important for open innovation programs. They are very important. And uh, the biggest point is that academia is the next unexplored opportunity in India, with less than 1% having a formal open innovation setup. If you talk about some key highlights, successful uh, industry academia collaboration have led to 20 to 25 percent increase in research commercialization, a 45 to 50 percent higher success rate in product development, and a 15 to 20 percent higher likelihood of achieving disruptive innovation, while startups that collaborate with academia grow 1.5x faster. So there are a lot of benefits that academia can offer for the ecosystem. Now, if we compare the ecos uh, academia ecosystem with the global counterpart, the global corporate academia partnership, the ones in India are largely transaction in nature, and that is what we have to improve going forward, and we have to increase more academia collaboration. Now, that's why our focus is to improve the matrix, because the current matrix is not good enough that we are measuring. So that's why in our report also, we have proposed a new matrix that stakeholders can follow, and uh, so that we can improve the uh, measurement of open innovation programs and more increase more of academia collaboration. Thanks for sharing these wonderful insights, Ashish. Thank you. For our next report, Digitalizing Insurance, Indian End Consumer Perspective, we have Dheeraj to discuss key findings from the report. Welcome, Dheeraj. Thank you. Dheeraj, first question to you. How has the Indian insurance industry been shaping since 2018? And how have people's choices transformed during this journey? Uh, so the Indian insurance industry has grown at nearly 8.4% uh, per annum uh, since 2018, with non-life insurance segment clocking between uh, 15 to 20% growth. Now, 84% of digital insurance consumers prefer 
purchasing insurance through traditional insurance websites or uh, mobile apps. However, funded insurance aggregators registered 4 to 5x growth in gross return premiums when compared to traditional insurers over the last 5 years. Interesting growth numbers. What factors have been driving digital insurance adoption and where do you see more headwinds? Uh, interestingly, uh, digital insurance adoption varies less with consumers, age groups, gender or uh, location and more with their nuanced life priorities. Across all demographic categories, key factors driving digital insurance adoption are the same. Uh, simplified comprehension, comparison and 24-7 access to services. Also key challenges that customer, customers face are also the same. So these include uh, concerns with online data sharing and misinformation lack of human expert guidance, connectivity or uh, broken transactions, uh, poor post-purchase services and so on. Quite interesting. Um, what do you think are legacy insurers doing to transform in the digital age? And what are some of the key technologies that seem to be shaping the future of InsurTech? Sure. Uh, so although legacy insurers have typically been uh, slow on tech adoption, but with the InsurTech boom, they are actively engaging in collaborations and partnerships. So key technologies uh, powering future insurtech services include AI, uh, big data and analytics, metaverse, web3, blockchain, gen AI and cyber security. Interesting insights. Thank you for sharing those. Ninja. Thank you so much for having me. For our Indian tech industry, digital talent demand supply analysis 2023 study, we have Naman to share the highlights from the report. Thanks, Namita. Naman, could you share an overview of the overall global tech talent with our viewers? Sure. Uh, at 34 to 36%, USA has the highest demand supply gap for which, uh, for the talent uh, for 2023, followed by the UK, which is which stands at 30 to 32%. When you talk about India, so India has the lowest tech talent demand supply gap at 25 to 27%. Interesting. Could you also highlight the talent demand supply trends in the Indian tech industry? Sure, sure. So in India, we have six mature tech hubs. Uh, these are Bangalore, Hyderabad, Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Pune. And they collectively represent 85% of India's digital talent pool. Uh, the second thing is that the digital talent gap for the tech industry is expected to widen from the current 25% to 28 to 29 percent by 2028. While tech demand uh, landscape continues to shift given emergence of new technologies, currently AI, big data analytics, IoT have the highest demand supply gap. And lastly, uh, you know, we have to talk about the fresher addition as well because that is a very important point. So fresher addition to the digital talent supply pool is expected to increase by 2x by the year 2028. Uh, and it will account for 16 to 18% of the total digital talent supply. Re remaining gap will uh, need to be addressed by reskilling or upskilling. Very interesting that you mentioned India has the lowest gap. Share with our viewers what have been the strengths of India's tech talent. Sure. Uh, you know, interestingly, in 2022 and 2023, India had one of the world's largest annual supplies of, of STEM graduates. And uh, I mean, by largest, we had about 2.5 million STEM graduates in the mentioned year. Also achieving a global leading female diversity ratio of 43 to 48%, which is another very interesting fact. Mm. Secondly, the tier two and tier three cities, they have contributed to around 60% of India's recent graduates from engineering, arts, uh, science and uh, you know science colleges. So you can see uh, it's not only the tier 1 cities that have contributed, but tier 2 and tier 3 cities have also taken up a large chunk of the contribution in this case. Interesting insights. Thank you for sharing them, Naman. Sure, thanks. Reminder viewers that all these reports are available for free. You can find the links in the description box below. For our next report, Quarterly Industry Review Q2 FY 2024, we have Prajwal to give us key highlights from the report. Thank you for welcoming me. Rajul, can you provide a brief overview of the worldwide tech spending and the deal landscape in the Indian tech industry in Q2? Sure, sure, Namita. Uh, so according to Gartner's projections, as of October 2023, a global technology spend growth is expected to witness a year-on-year -year increase of 9.5% in 2023. 
which is lower as compared with the previous projections of 10.6% as of July 2023. Now this is due to capital restrictions and margin concerns which is dealing IT spending. If you talk about deals in Q2 FY 2024, uh, the top listed Indian tech companies announced a combined deal pipeline exceeding uh, $27 billion, an increase of 32% quarter on quarter. Now the increase in deal pipeline is attributed to a growing proportion of cost optimization deals, but continues to face delay decision making cycles affecting the conversion of pipeline into billable clients. Quite interesting. What does this really mean for the Indian tech sector and the various segments? Okay, so for the sample set of companies that we analyze, revenues grew 0.3% quarter on quarter and 2.8% year on year in reported currency terms. In Q2 FI 2024, North America and India sustained growth sequentially, while EMA and the rest of the world experienced a quarter on quarter decline. Now in terms of verticals, the sector witnessed sequential, uh, sequential revenue growth for healthcare, retail, transportation, travel and hospitality, and manufacturing verticals, while telecom and BFSI saw a decline in this quarter. The employee base declined by 0.23% quarter on quarter in Q2 FY24 as companies focused on improving current utilization levels while attrition continued it downtrend. Now coming to the segment wise performance, pure play ERND sustained revenue growth of 4.4% growth year quarter on quarter, which is credited to the continued focus on digital engineering, especially in the domain of aerospace and SDVs, which is software defined vehicles, which includes passenger car vertical, autonomous driving and digital connected solutions. Among regions, Europe and in sectors, transportation, industrial products and energy mining and utility were the key growth drivers. Now coming to pure play BPM, revenues grew 1.1% sequentially, while net hiring increased by 3.8% sequentially. Pure play BPM companies are increasing focus on AI training and certifications to ensure an AI ready workforce. Great insights. Thank you for sharing them, Prajwal. Thank you so much, Namita. Now I'd like to welcome Shagun from our marketing team to provide a concise summary of our recent thought leadership sessions and explain to you why you should watch them. Shagun, over to you. Thanks, Samita. We had a number of insightful sessions in the month of November. A session was recorded at the site line of the NASCOM Future Forge 2023 during the report launch of Open Innovation, the catalyst of transforming India's technology ecosystem. For this conversation, we had Mr. Akshay Khanna, Managing Partner at Amazent. The discussion revolved around the impact of open innovation on corporates, startups and academia. Providing a comprehensive overview of these implications for India's technology ecosystem. Next, we recorded a Tech Talk session to delve into the NASCOM BCG report titled Seizing the ERND Advantage, Frontier for 2030. Mr. Snehil Gambhir, partner and director at BCG India joined us for a detailed discussion on the future outlook of the ER in the industry. The conversation covered topics such as global shift in ER spending and influential mega trends shaping the industry and the sector projected to lead growth up to the year 2030. Lastly, an insightful leader talk session was recorded with Mr. Bharat Ram Gopalan. Senior VP Cloud Service Line Virtusa. During the session, significant perspectives were shared regarding Virtusa's progression into the cloud, the strategic application of lesson learned from the migration to enhance customer cloud experiences, and a discourse on emerging trends expected to shape the landscape in the coming years. Thank you, Shagan. Viewers, the links to the sessions are in the description box below. Go check them out. Next, we have Khyati from the marketing team with us to give a quick overview of key happenings in the industry. Welcome, Khyati. Thanks, Namita. So some major tech partnerships include ASAP Kerala, the state-run skill development agency under the higher education department that has forged a strategic partnership with DSpace to provide jobs for skilled youth in the state. UPES University has formalized a memorandum of understanding with HCL Tech. The collaboration seeks to promote the utilization of cutting-edge digital technologies including AI, IoT, Industry 4.0, data engineering and cloud computing to drive innovative solutions for the oil and gas sector. Space Basic, a B2B SaaS company, has announced a partnership with Good Host Spaces. This collaboration aims to mark a step towards enhancing the quality of student housing operations. 
LNT Tech Services has partnered with Google Cloud for implementing generative technology in operations. The company will combine its expertise with Google Cloud to reduce manual efforts and boost development efficiency. Wipro announced a collaboration with NVIDIA to help healthcare companies accelerate adoption of generative artificial intelligence through AI-driven strategies, products and services. Now coming to some of the major tech contracts. TCS signed an agreement with Australia's primary securities exchange, ASX, to provide a next-generation clearing and settlement platform to service the Australian market. ASX will implement TCS banks for market infra infrastructure to enable the transformation. Bank of Commerce has selected Infosys Pinnacle Suite for its core banking transformation and will replace Bankcom's legacy platform. Zensa Technologies announced a collaboration with Hawaii Gas for the implementation of Salesforce Energy and Utilities Cloud. This will enable Hawaii Gas to streamline its business processes and enhance its customer experience. Now talking about acquisitions this month, CIEL Group has acquired RG Staffing Services Private Limited. The company has signed definitive agreements with RG to purchase 100% equity stake. This integration will lead to stronger servicing for their clients according to the company. Apex, a no-code platform, announced the acquisition of EdTech SaaS business of App Squads. This will allow Apex to expand its creator base and provide more tools for creators to build engaging learning experiences. Thank you for sharing these insights, Kyati. Viewers, thank you for joining us today. You can find all our reports on the NASCOM community and the NASCOM website, that is community.nascom.in and nascom.in. We have an array of reports lined up for release in December, so stay tuned. To receive instant notifications when we post new videos on our channel, be sure to click the bell icon. If you found this video insightful, please share it with your friends and colleagues. We eagerly anticipate your feedback. Keep coming back for more. Thank you.